Hi, I'm Kristen. This is Crafting with Kristen. Today we're going to be doing a cool project. Today we're going to be making some hand painted glassware. We're going to be doing this cool exploited skull onto a piece of glassware. I'm painting it on a beer mug today, but you can paint it on pretty much any type of glass you want. So you could do like a soda glass if you don't drink or like a glass coffee mug. Or, you know, if you're more of a champagne type of person, you could do a champagne flute, or you could do a wine glass, or like a, even a martini glass. It might be kind of hard to fit a design this big on a martini glass, but we can make it work. So all you're gonna need for this project is you're going to need whatever kind of glass you wanna paint on. You're going to need something to put your paint in, like one of these little cheapo plastic trays. They sell them at like places like Walmart and dollar stores. You're also gonna need some paint brushes with a fine point like these ones that I have here. I would highly recommend getting artist quality ones for acrylic paint instead of getting the cheap craft ones from like a store like Michaels or something like that. It's just really gonna be able to give you better control and give you better fine lines and overall just make the process a lot easier. And you're also going to need some glass paint. I highly recommend this Martha Stewart brand one. It's worked amazingly well for me. As you can see, my glass right here. I use it all the time and it still looks beautiful. I've washed it and everything. So the colors that we're gonna need for this project is gonna be white, black, and then for a little pop of color, I did red. So once you get all your paint and your brushes and all that together, pour yourself a little something to drink and let's get crafting. So first you're gonna wanna clean the glassware with some rubbing alcohol. This step is optional, but it makes the paint adhere better and gives you a clean surface to work on. We're gonna get our glass paint into the little plastic tray Put a good amount of black and white. I'm not gonna pour the red yet. I'm gonna use that once I get to that step. That way the paint doesn't start to dry out and get all crusty and gunky. I always wet my brush before I start using it and then dry it off with a little rag that I have reserved for this. The first step that you're gonna do is you're gonna start to draw an egg shape, like a sideways oval. Next, you're gonna start to draw a little triangle pointing off to the side, just like that. And you're gonna draw a long little rectangle coming out of it. And then you're gonna draw another little rectangle coming out. Then you're gonna do a C shape for the eye. And then in the opposite direction, you're gonna do kind of a little half of a rectangle to mark where you're gonna have the indent in the side of the skull. You're gonna use another little triangle to mark where the eyebrow is gonna go. And you're gonna start filling all this in with white. The only area that you don't wanna fill in with white is the little C shape for the eye and the little area that's gonna be the indent in the skull. I'm starting to draw the little pointed pieces for the teeth. It's a pretty simple shape, just little triangles. And they're kind of varied in shape. There's one big long one that's kind of where the canine teeth would be on a carnivorous animal. And next we're gonna start drawing all the little bone spikes that make up the mohawk of this skull. I'm kind of just freehanding it. But you're just gonna wanna get a nice even amount of paint on there and then just drag your paintbrush along steady and with control. And as you can notice from the reference photo, they get a little bit shorter as they get down to the base of the skull. So you'll just kind of want to bear that in mind as you're drawing each line. But remember that this is a hand-painted object. 
and having a little bit of differences between the original gives it a little bit of character and it shows that you made it yourself. So don't hang up too much on all the little nuances and details and getting it perfect, especially if this is your first try. We're gonna take our black paint and we're gonna start filling in the area where we have the eye. So I'm kind of tracing that C shape, but then I'm giving it a big ridge on the top of it, kind of that little angry eyebrow shape. And I'm filling in this area where the ridge is and drawing a little C shape uh, towards the end of the skull. And then to draw the, the jawbone, it's kind of like a little U shape that kind of tapers off a little bit. Just like that. And then you're gonna do a straight curved sort of a line towards the back of the skull. Now I'm outlining where the teeth would be. You're kind of just drawing little C and U shapes along that edge, and then we're gonna fill them in later. Now we're gonna let the paint dry for a little bit so we can start adding some more layers on. Now that we've let it dry for a little bit, we're gonna get some more white paint. We're gonna start building up the layers where we had put that base coat. The trouble with the glass paint is it's not very opaque, so you kind of have to do a couple layers before you really start to get the detail work in. Otherwise, it'll start to show through the glass. If you try to build more layers while the paint is still wet, it'll kind of just start to scrape off the glass the more layers you build. So it's important to give it a little bit of drying time. mixed up some gray and I'm starting to fill in all those little areas that I outlined in white. We're gonna bring some of the black into it for some contrast, but I really wanna blend this out. You can get the right shade of gray just by mixing the black and white paint together. I find that it's better to go a little bit heavier on the white side of the paint because you can always mix in a little bit more black, but it's kinda hard once you've mixed too dark of a gray to really lighten it back up and I'm filling in most of the area with this gray, I can add a pop of white or I can add some contrast by the black after this layer dries. This is gonna be the step to give me a good gradient. Right above the eyebrow, I kinda have a little V shape and that kinda really gives a lot of depth to there. I'm just starting to outline some of the areas where I have the gray with a little bit of black so I get this nice gradient going on. Doing little feathered strokes around the back side of the skull where we have that little concave spot. Also re-outline the jawbone area with the black. Now I'm starting to bring back in some of the white. And I really want a nice crisp white line over that eyebrow. It's really gonna bring a lot of emphasis to there. I'm repeating the same with the jawbone right now. And now I'm starting to blend the back of the skull. 
So I want this nice from a light gray up into a dark gray going on here, continuing that C shape. One tip that I don't practice but gives you better control over the paintbrush is using your pinky finger to set it on the glass. This will give you a steadier hand if you haven't practiced much with painting. getting some of my black paint and I'm starting to redraw that little shape that I have on the concave part of the skull. And I'm re-outlining all those little V shapes and lines around the jawbone, tracing along the teeth. I'm starting to build it back up with that back of the skull. I'm still leaving a thin little white line there. It gives it kind of a backlight sort of a shine. It gives it a lot more depth. Now I'm taking my white paint again and I'm just kind of reinforcing these lines. So Blending them in a little, giving them a nice softness. This is also gonna hide any kind of imperfections that you have in your painting. The more layers that you build up, the more believable it looks. Now I'm gonna take my red paint and I'm gonna start filling in the spikes on the top of the head. Good amount of red paint and slow and with control and doing little long strokes trying to keep the paint even. And remember that if your edges aren't perfect we are going to outline this in black at the end so you still have some wiggle room if you feel like you messed up. You can also use the rubbing alcohol as like an eraser. You just need a little washcloth and then you just rub over the area that you want to erase. It does kind of get a little clumpy and it's a little difficult to get a fine little spot, but if you feel like you completely want to start over your project or you accidentally, you know, touch the paint with your thumb and smear it on a part of the glass you don't want painted, it's a nice way to just kind of use it like an eraser. Now we're gonna let it dry for a little bit and then we're gonna come back to it and start doing some outlining. All right, so now we got our black paint and this is one where you don't wanna have too much paint on it because getting a fine line, you want just a nice even amount of paint on your brush. And you can always reapply more when it runs out. Just dipping a little bit in there and then I'm just tracing fine little lines all around the edges of here. Outlining all the little marks that I made like the eyebrows, the eyes, and I'm just tracing those marks that I've already made. I highly recommend printing out a reference photo and having it in front of you. You could also use your phone or a tablet or a computer screen to look at the reference photo. I'm just very hands-on and I like the paper in front of me. And it's better for your eyes. Now I'm outlining the teeth. One of the neat little things I do to give the teeth a lot of definition, I outline them, but then on every other tooth or on a random tooth, I'll draw a fine little line like I have on this third one in, just to kind of give it a little bit of roughness.
I'm continuing to outline the jawbone and all of these little teeth. shape of the skull. One thing that's a helpful tip is to avoid smearing the paint around with the palm of your hand. You can turn the glass just like I did here. One thing that you'll want to do periodically too is you'll want to rinse your brush in the water and then dry it off before you get new paint. Eventually it'll start to get kind of clumped up with paint that's sort of half dry or things like that. Having a clean brush to work with is really good. Now I'm beginning to outline all the spikes on one side, and then after I finish the one side, I'm gonna go ahead and start outlining them on the other. Painting can be a very tedious process, but I find it very cathartic. Painting's also kind of nice because it's a project where you can start it, and then if you kind of get burnt out, you can set it to the side and come back to it a little bit later.
gonna start marking all the little bone-like pieces on this skull mohawk. So basically you're just gonna draw little straight lines kind of uh, in thirds along every spike. And you can kind of vary them, make them a little uneven, or you can stick to a system where they all fall along the same line. Now we're gonna rinse off our brush and we're gonna get a little white paint and we're gonna go ahead and start putting a few crisp little highlights here and there. You kind of just want to do little streaks of white paint where you'd imagine the light hitting. It gives it a nice little shine. So I'm really reinforcing the top of the skull as if the light was hitting it there. I'm also going to highlight the jawbone a lot, especially like right along the edges where that little U shape is and right along the little straight line right underneath this crease. Give it a little bit of backlight on the back of the head and just along the bottom jawline. And I like to give it a few little highlights along the teeth, but if you do it on every single tooth, it kind of starts to look a little unrealistic. And I'm just putting one or two tiny little dots randomly along the spikes on the top. The more random you do these little white spots or more sparse that you do them, the more realistic they're gonna look. Let that dry for a little bit and now we're going to start painting the logo. I didn't have it in my reference photo but thankfully I have a wine glass that I made before with the exploited logo on it so I'm just kind of using that as a base. This is relatively simple so I'm just doing big bold letters and I'm just tracing it out with the white paint. I want to get a nice thick layer of paint on here so it's easier to layer the red on top. each letter I'm pretty much getting new paint onto my brush. And usually with the logo step, I'm a little less particular about having the lines extra clean and smooth. Now that we've let that dry a little bit, now I'm gonna go ahead and start going over everything with red. I do the white first because it's easier to build up a nice base than doing a whole bunch of layers of this red. When I've painted with this in the past, I noticed that the white tends to leave down a better base than the red does. So I usually like to layer down the white and then put the red on top of it, just like I did with the mohawk on the skull. Now that I've got all the letters outlined, I'm gonna let it dry for a little bit, have some wine. Now that it's dry, I'm gonna start outlining the letters in black. Just like I did when I was outlining the skull, I'm a little bit more precise with this part than I was with layering down the red. A nice fine line is really gonna make these letters pop versus layering down all the red and everything. I just wanted a good base to work off of. Thing that I don't always do but is kind of beneficial is right now I'm working from left to right with outlining it so I'm avoiding smudging everything because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed the opposite might work for you but like I said before you can always kind of turn the glass at a different angle to avoid doing this or if you make mistakes you can use the rubbing alcohol and a washcloth to correct your mistakes. And I'm gonna give it a quick little bit of touch-ups with the red paint and just some of the areas where I got a little sloppy with the black paint. And there it is. Now we're gonna put our glassware into a nice cool oven. It's important to put the glassware into a nice cool oven. If you put it into a preheated oven and your glass is too cool, it will crack the glass. Once we have the glassware in there, we're gonna turn the heat up to 350 and set a timer for 30 minutes.
After 30 minutes, you can open the oven, let the oven cool, and then slowly remove your glassware. I recommend using a pot holder just in case they're still hot and putting them on a fabric surface so that way if your countertop is cool, you will not crack the glass. Cheers! I hope that you had fun making this project with me. If you like the way that your project turned out, make sure to tag me in social media so I can see what we created together. If there's projects that you want to work on in the future, leave a comment below so I know what to do for my next video. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for crafting with me.